Following on from my video about the events of uh, 1650 BCE in the Jordan Valley, I came across another story, which is about a different settlement, Tel Abu Hurera in Syria, a much older settlement. This was initially inhabited 13,000 years ago uh, through to about 9,000 years ago. And it's very, very significant as an, uh, a site in uh, archaeology and human history because it marks the first establishment of farming, of agriculture. People switched from, farm, uh, from being hunter-gatherers over to actually cultivating crops that they planted themselves um, at this uh, location and around about this time. So the first occupation of the site is dated to about 13,500 BCE. Um, and at the time, it appears that the civilization was very much the sort of hunter-gatherer, hunter-collector uh, civilizations. All the cereals that they uh, seem to be feeding upon, where there's evidence of the remains of them in uh, remaining pots and so forth, seems to indicate they were the wild variety uh, rather than a, a well-cultivated crop. And then that city lasted about 1300 years in this same sort of condition. And then suddenly the hunter-gatherers abandoned the location and left it um, and moved elsewhere. And this seems to line up with a, a cold period called the Younger Dryas, uh, climatic time when there was a, like a miniature ice age uh, for a period of time that uh, dropped the temperature down and would have caused considerable stress for the, uh, the community. So it's uh, likely that they moved somewhere more hospitable and uh, possibly to the location of Nurebet, about 50 kilometers to the northeast. But then later, only 9,500 BCE, the climate had uh, returned back to normal uh, and uh, the uh, people reoccupied the site again for around 2000 years. And the evidence shows a huge change in their behavior. They were now planting and growing domesticated varieties, uh, much uh, greater yield from the crops with uh, larger, healthier uh, seeds and so forth. Um, and they probably learned how to do this while they were away at Murebet. So this period, the Younger Dryas, is marked on this uh, his ancient history timeline here. And we uh, have it running from about 12,800 uh, years ago here to uh, um, this uh, period here. And you can see the, uh, the temperature in the timeline took quite a dip. This is the temperature uh, in degrees C based on uh, uh, ice cores from Greenland. Um, you can see there'd been a warmer period preceding it, and then it went very cold for a while and then quite quickly recovered and went back to the more uh, typical temperatures that we have now. And so it's quite likely that this uh, would have caused the uh, settlers quite significant stress resulting in them moving. Now I've described this place as a city. Uh, actually, it wasn't that big. There were only about 200 people and uh, they were located on one of the back channels of the Euphrates River. That was uh, what was making the area so um, fertile where they moved to. And so this is really where farming began. These days, we can't do any more archeology span though because the whole area has been buried in uh, a lake, Lake uh, Assad in Syria was created in the 1970s as a drinking water reservoir and the whole area has been drowned. But fortunately, before it was drowned, the archeologists were given a good opportunity to move in and carry away with them everything they could possibly uh, manage. And they found lots of things, all this evidence of uh, hunter gathering followed by the change to agriculture was discovered. The uh, hut structures of the uh, settlers, um, accommodation and so forth. But they also found in a later analysis something else. And this is where our real interest lies. They found melted glass spheres. 
strewn across the whole region. And these are evidence of a 2000 degree C temperature. Again, this points to an extraterrestrial source, a comet or asteroid strike is really the only thing that can create this sort of temperature on uh, Earth. We, we've looked at other cases where we've considered things like um, volcanoes. Well, they only get up to about 1600 degrees. Uh, and ordinary wildfires, it's only a thousand. So to create these glass spheres, you really can only have one explanation. And it's backed up by evidence uh, from the tremendous heat from uh, other examples where organic material, plants and so forth have been burned and the fragments then embedded in uh, various uh, rock samples and pottery and so forth. There's even uh, globules of melted nickel iron, which point to uh, an iron meteorite. And these are enriched with heavy metals like platinum and uh, iridium, which really only um, can have one source, and that's uh, a meteorite coming into the Earth's atmosphere and either making it to the ground and exploding or blowing up as a bolide high in the uh, Earth's atmosphere. And when we look across the world, we find actually this uh, same event seems to have uh, got evidence scattered over uh, basically four continents from Asia uh, through Europe, right across Greenland, North America and into South America, across this enormous uh, elliptical shape field plotted out on this projection here. And it looks like perhaps uh, an object entered the Earth's atmosphere and, and perhaps fragmented into a number of separate uh, bodies and that they all came crashing down to, to uh, the Earth in different locations in a storm of meteorite impacts um, and scattered the uh, resulting material all over this uh, large area of the Earth. Now this then of course created that nuclear winter effect bl blowing huge amounts of dirt and dust into the atmosphere and blotting the sun out for uh, many, many years, uh, creating a, a, the mini ice age effect um, and also, of course, triggering waves of uh, extinction of various creatures all around the world. In America, it seems to have uh, affected the local population. It probably accounted in Asia for this uh, story and, and of the switch to agriculture that I've talked about. It was probably the trigger. The uh, local inhabitants probably witnessed the blast um, and uh, it may have done them no end of damage. Um, and then the survivors then moved to uh, a, a more hospitable location uh, in an effort to uh, uh, carry on. Uh, the evidence for it is all over the world. We find soot, platinum and uh, heavy metals in South Carolina, nano diamonds caused by the shock waves. Uh, compressing carbon under high temperature uh, in places like Mexico. Again, Greenland, ice cores showing a high platinum content from this date. And uh, even down in, in Chile, there are uh, glass spherules. So this was a, almost a worldwide uh, event, really quite a big one. In North America, there are swarms of uh, fragments uh, that appear to have uh, then set most of uh, North America on fire. There's huge amounts of burning that occurred and it probably took care of the North American mega beasts, uh, the megafauna, the giant sloths, the uh, um, uh, mammoths and uh, mastodons and so forth were uh, one of the casualties of this event. Uh, they were, of course, being hunted heavily by the uh, Clovis Point people with their uh, special shaped spears that are uh, characteristic of their culture. And they too disappeared, uh, probably as a result of the really appalling conditions that uh, were found. Now, one problem with uh, this story has been for a long time that nobody's been able to really pin down a large impact crater. But perhaps that's now changed. Um, there's the Hiawatha crater up in Greenland, which was originally suspected of being uh, associated with this time period, but may date to uh, 
the wrong time. But there's a second impact that's been uh, found and is now covered in the ice sheet of Greenland. And it's buried so that you can't actually see it. You have to use radar to penetrate down through the ice in order to reveal this uh, crater. And uh, this was recently announced uh, in a, a, a paper in Nature. This is a, a reconstruction of the shape of the crater underneath the, the uh, kilometer thick ice layer, which has been shown in cutaway here in this uh, representation. And so it's quite possible that we've now found essentially the smoking gun for this uh, event that triggered this mini ice age called the Younger Dryas um, and had catastrophic effects across at least half of the globe, um, but was also responsible for the emergence of uh, human farming and agricultural civilization. Um, just goes to show that necessity is the mother of invention and that these bad catastrophes can lead to innovation um, and uh, it's the adaptability of human beings that has enabled them to find their way around these sorts of problems that uh, results in us being here now. And with that, I'll bring this little talk to a close. I hope you've enjoyed another example of uh, death from the skies. <laughs>